Hey everybody, what's happening? Friday, morning Devo with Boo, getting ready. Sorry, I'm a little late creeping in. Um, put you guys on hold for a little bit, but I have all my Bibles out and I was looking at all just the different versions and, and how they relate to this passage that we're gonna be going through today. Have you ever done that before? Um, where you uh, started reading maybe the Bible and then all of a sudden you were just kind of like, huh, I wonder what this version, kind of how that puts it or how this is. And and pretty soon you have a bunch of things out on the desk or, you know, nowadays we just go on to our, our website, our web browser, and we kind of look it up there and, and uh, you know, you might bring up a bunch of tabs and just start looking at different things. Well, that's kind of what I was doing this morning. But welcome to the Morning Devo with Boo. And uh, I'm your host. I'm going to be getting in the Word this morning just a little bit. And uh, I'm glad you can join me on the journey through the Bible. We're in the book of Numbers 25. I was hoping actually to get through a bunch of chapters today. But um, I just thought, "Mm, you know, we'll just keep it mellow and go through 25. We went through a couple chapters yesterday and that was kind of a lot. So we'll kind of, uh, you know, just pick just take it slow right take it mellow and uh so welcome in the house marcia paula tina and uh let's see laura's in the house so totally stoked friday it is what april 29th how about that almost may and uh that's pretty pretty cool may's coming up here anytime so uh really soon and gosh we're already gonna be can you believe it? We're going to be in the J months here pretty soon, you know? It's just going to be unreal. Unreal. So, Numbers 25. Interesting section. Remember the Moabites? Remember who they were the descendants of? Can anybody in the comment corner, does anybody remember wh- who is the father of the Moabites? And if you can get that, uh, let's see, what will I give you? What will I give you? If you get that right, I will give you a stapler. No, I won't give you a stapler. No way. Chapter 25. While Israel was staying in Shittim, the men began to indulge in sexual immorality with Moabite women. Okay, I'm going to stop there for a sec and just remind you that the book of Numbers is covering a period of like 40 years. Yeah, 40 years of wilderness wanderings. One generation is going to pass away in the wilderness, and then the next generation is going to go into the promised land. Now, in the latter stages of Numbers, there's going to be a lot of reiteration of kind of some of the laws that we've already kind of gone over, but they kind of need to go over it again because guess what? You have another generation that's going to be entering into the land. So if you ever wondered like, man, the Bible's repeating itself. It doesn't know what it's doing. Well, no, it knows what it's doing. It's just the other generation needs to know too. And that's what's being written is what's going on with that newer generation that's coming up. It's a good reminder to us actually that we always have to teach people teach the new generation the things about God, which is cool. What happens when a generation doesn't know God at all? What are things that are lost? What are the things that are lost in the lack of understanding of the Bible? Well, maybe some of the problems that we have today come from those kind of ideas, right? Is that maybe it's just we don't have a good understanding of what is right or what is wrong or objective truth anymore. But hey, you know, that is uh, that is something to ponder and think about. And uh, we're here to think through our life today. So I'm going to read from a different version and just hear what it's and let you hear kind of how this begins in 25. It says, while Israel was encamped at Acacia, some of the young men began to uh, going to wild parties with the local Moabite girls. So that's another version. And isn't that a cool way of putting it? I, I kind of like that one. Hey, they're going to wild parties with the Moabite girls, right? Sounds very high schoolish in a way, the way it's written. But you see, uh, 
Now, you might go, oh, man, well, why is that such a big deal? Well, let's, let's go on. The girls also invited them to attend the sacrifices to their gods, and soon the men were not only attending the feast, but also bowing down and worshiping the idols. Whoa. So, the Moabites. Moabites, the ladies, enticed the men. Oh, is this not the story of of life in general, the history uh, that we have on the earth, right? Now, it's interesting, but the Bible here assumes something that our culture struggles with, and that is the idea that there's men and there's women. Yeah. And and here we, we, we're going to find out later in the book that this was actually all kind of put together by um, Balaam. By remember that false prophet that was talked about yesterday? Well, he kind of had a little bit of some stuff. He had something to do with what's going on here. And we'll get into that later on. But uh, Paula says, my boys were brought up in the church and it breaks my heart that they no longer, nor have they taught their children about God. My oldest son is very spiritual. My youngest son is agnostic. Yeah. And that happens a lot. Sometimes generations don't pass on stuff, right? Now, the Moabites, if we go into our web browser, just I want you guys to know how to do this. But if you just put Father of Moab in your web browser, it's going to come up and you're going to find out where these people are from. Um, There's all kinds of, you know, different answers, but usually the first ones aren't too bad. And, and, And here this one's right. It says, who is Moab's father? Lot, the nephew of Abraham, was the father of Moab. And that's true. And that's absolutely right on. So Moab actually was a descendant of Lot, right? A lot. That's right. Remember through that incestuous relationship with his daughter, right? Sexual immorality, right? Man, going the going a different way, a distorted way than what God had t- intended. So there's a purpose, you know, to there's a purpose to my sexuality. It's not random. It's not just what I want to do. It's there's a purpose. It's it's created. Uh, you know, it has a creator behind the creation. And here, um, it's interesting, right? You, it's kind of odd, right? It, I, it's just a weird story, right? That you have Moab, which is, we know Moab's history from, from Lot. And that interesting situation of Sodom and Gomorrah and the daughters of Lot and, and Lot getting drunk and all that. And, and babies come out and Moab's one of them. And, and it's through that. Now you have the Moabite girls <clears throat> that have been actually encouraged by the enemies of Israel <clears throat> to actually take, go into the camp of Israel and lure and entice, right, um, these men to, to go with them. Now, it's not just them hanging out with them, and it's not just them, <clears throat> in a sense, enjoying some time with the opposite sex. But notice what's happening. They actually, the ladies encourage the men to bow down to their idols, to worship Baal. Isn't that interesting? One of the, the, you know, the chief god of the Moabites, right? The god of Moab. And the anger of the Lord burns hot. Something that lures us away and moves us into idolatry man that is powerful to us you know the in the book of colossians it tells us that uh, there's a a passage that talks it's chapter three of colossians but it goes over how we can easily fall into these these ways of sensuality and sexuality that really are idolatry um, and it talk, and we've all, I mean, if I want to be honest, if I'm going to be honest, man, dude, that's easy to succumb to. We all succumb to distortions of what God intended for our sexuality. <clears throat> but the big picture here is just that idea that there are things that maybe today I need to be aware of that are going to lure me or move in my life to lure me away from Maybe the simplicity of the gospel, as the New Testament puts it, you know, just the right, just knowing Christ, 
right? Focusing on Jesus, knowing I'm saved by grace through faith, um, you know, giving me a devoted heart to God, you know, that single devoted heart to the Lord, you know, there's going to be something that's going to give it. And if it's not, you know, in your life, it might not be, you know, the women of Moab, you know, it might not be, you know, and a lot of people go, oh, well, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't deal with any kind of lustful thing on the internet or anything like that. But oh, really? What are, what are the lustful things that you succumb to? What is the, what, how does the lust hit in your life? might not be sexuality things and that might not be sex at all it might be something different right <clears throat> it might be the love of money it might be greed it might be envy it might be strife it might be jealousies right there's so many things that <clears throat> lure us away and we always have to remember that that um you know, there is an enemy of our souls that's always wanting to lure us away and move us away from just that wonderful devotion to Christ. Remember what it was like when you first came to the Lord? Oh man, dude, just that awesome, like, whoa, dude, God loves me, right? That simple devotion to God. And and then there's things that crowd, get right involved and get crowd in, crowd in your life. And... Um, and man, I don't want to be that person who's just bowing down, you know, bowing down to those things. Now, I like with how the New King James puts this. It says, Israel remained in Acacia Grove and the people began to commit harlotry with the women of Moab. They invited the people to sacrifice to their gods and the people ate and bowed down uh, to their gods. So there was an invitation <laughs> given. Hey, do you want to do this? Hey, come hang out with me. Hey, let's chill out. You know, let's go grab some. Blah, blah, blah. It starts off so innocent, right? A little invitation, right? But the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, man, they all kind of get us, right? Get us unfocused. Um, you know, uh, being mentally renewed daily in our minds is something we have to do all the time. And we find that w the righteous person falls seven times, yet gets right back up. Um, you know, that we got to keep getting back up and keep renewing that mind, keep focusing on the Lord, right? Yeah. So there's this invitation that goes out. And I love how the New, New King James put it right, like that, the, that they were invited, you know, the the women invited them to it and it says an israel joined and that it says it jo they joined with baal and i like that word joined too because the word joined kind of gives us uh for for bible students it kind of awakens us to another passage right a man shall leave father and mother and be what a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, right? Joined, that word joined, to adhere to, to glue, you know? Think of it that way, to glue. Now, I don't know if there's any craft folk out there, but I, this is what I think this morning is like, hey, what am I joining with? And man, I've joined with a lot of stuff. You know, there's a lot of things you join with. What do I join with in my mind? What do I join with with my body, with my members, right? As Paul talked about, our body parts, our members, right? And, um, you know, what am I joining with? What am I going after, you know? What am I gluing to, you know, kind of thing? And that's what it says. So Israel joined to Baal, to a false god. They were bowing down. They started worshiping other gods. The girls said, hey, come over here. They went, whoa, lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh. They went over that direction. And pretty soon they were bowing down. Now, I remember, oh man, this is, I mean, it's, it's, it's always going on in life. But I remember a big kind of idea of this in my life when, um, you know, you end up going to like a, a party and I ended up going to my first rave. I remember back in Los Angeles and, and then all of a sudden you get enticed, right? And then, you know, gosh, all of a sudden you're doing more harder drugs and you're getting more intense into it. And man, there's a lot of eye candy around 
And eye candy just means things to see, and it doesn't necessarily mean something sexual, but it could mean something just sensual, something that it fills the appetite of the mind. And boy, you know, TV is like an eye candy, right? It, 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 it just, it's something that visually stimulates you in many ways. And it, like I said, it doesn't have to be some kind of sexual thing. It can just be, you know, that arousing, that, that, whoa, that's so cool. And man, that's amazing. And, you know, and our, we get really into it. Um, but the idea is that things can entice and move us away. And it can be subtly. And then all of a sudden, we're bowing down to Baal. So today, I just want to be kind of, you know, cognitive, you know, of those areas in my life. Um, the areas that it's easy for me to join with other things, um, knowing that that is true, that there are things that I can join with really quickly that aren't aren't necessarily good for me, are godly things. There's something that God is joined with, maybe something God is into, you know, and maybe I'm joining myself to something that God's not even into, right? But yet, you know, I'm, I'm joined, you know, to it. Um, so then the Lord said to Moses, so we'll see kind of what happens with this narrative right here. Now, remember, this is the latter period of that 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. So we've covered a ton of years in the book of Numbers already. We're kind of dealing with this latter generation now, this or the younger generation now that's going to be, that is older now, that's going to be able to enter this land, uh, the promised land. And it says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Take all the leaders of the people and hang the offenders before the Lord out in the sun, that the fierce anger of the Lord may turn away from Israel. Whoa. And I'm going to read that in another one too. It says, Execute all the tribal leaders of Israel. Hang them up before the Lord in broad daylight so that his fierce anger will turn away from the people. Now, when I read that this morning, you know what I thought of? I thought of Jesus. And, and I, I've read this passage so many times, and, but it just hit me. I just thought of the Lord. And it, maybe it's because um, I came home the other day and my wife was watching The Passion of Christ. And it was at the, the crucifixion scene uh, in The Passion. And, and it was interesting. Jesus kept looking up at the sun and the clouds were kind of moving past the sun. And, but he, he, you know, the sun rays are kind of coming down on him. And there he is propped up on the cross and he's like on a mountain, right? And he's on the hills outside of Jerusalem and, and he's hanging there, right? And the wrath of God, um, the wrath that we deserve is being poured out on the sun, right? The sun is bearing the wrath that we deserved. And, and, it, and when I read this this morning, I kind of thought, whoa, dude, that's kind of hardcore, Notice they take these, the men that did this, that actually went with these Moabite women. And what did they do? They, uh, they hung them in broad daylight before the Lord so that his fierce anger, so God's anger will turn away from the people. And I thought of Jesus, you know, being there in broad daylight in the sunshine, right? Right up there before the Lord. His death was right there in front of the Father. And the Father's fierce anger is on the Son. So that what? He will turn away from the people. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? And I thought, man, that's so powerful, right? This little sentence in the book of Numbers chapter 25 reminded me of what Jesus has done for me. He he became, you know, took the curse from us, right? He took it. He bore the wrath. The iniquities of all of us were put on him, right? The chastisement that we deserved were, was put on him, right? Um, he who no, knew no sin became sin. He became one like one of these people that deserved to be executed, right? He was judged as someone who deserved to be executed. And he was put up before the Father so that his fierce anger would be able to turn, would turn away from the people. So he would, his anger is no longer on you. It's no longer on me this morning. And I think, dude, that's so awesome. 
God, God's anger is no longer on Bo. You know, he has no wrath towards me. You know, we're at peace, you know. You know, Jesus is our peace. He has made peace you know, between me and the Father. And I just thought, man, that's so cool, man. What a beautiful, beautiful picture of Jesus right here. Numbers chapter 25, right? Those These people sinned. They went astray, right? We like all like sheep have gone astray. We have joined ourselves to idols. We have joined ourselves to the Baals of the world, right? Um, uh, and And we're the ones that deserve the punishment, but yet, you know, God has laid on him, the Messiah, uh, you know, he's put on him all of what we deserve, right? All of the, the wrath of the Father, all the judgment was put on Christ. So pretty, pretty cool little insight there, right, of, of Christ. And I, I just found that fascinating. It says, so Moses ordered the judges to execute all who had worshipped Baal. They joined, they Baal, they bowed down. The idea of worship, by the way, means to bow down, to kiss, actually, to bow down, like a dog lapping, um, you know, to to be underneath, to look up, and you know, uh, as you bow down, and and uh, the kiss in the sense of to rev- to have reverence for, you know. And it says, but one of is the Israeli men in his, uh, insolently, meaning one of the Israel men here, just in a <clears throat> stroke of anger, brought a Midianite girl. <clears throat> now, Midian, remember Midian? Someone said it in the comment corner. Someone said who Midian's from, all right? I think someone said they were from what? Ishmael. I think someone said that. I want to say it was Marsha. So, um I'm not sure. I can't find it right now, but I'm pretty sure Marcia said maybe it was from the Midian was from um, Ishmael. And I'm pretty sure that's right on. Uh, And um, so now you have, you know, a descendant of Ishmael, right? One of the Israeli men uh, insolently brought a Midianite girl into the camp. Uh, And it says... Right before the eyes of Moses and all the people as they were weeping at the door of the tabernacle. So as everybody's sad over what's going on, right? Um, you know, this guy just goes, man, I'm going to bring in my girl. And here he goes. You know, he doesn't care. He doesn't have any, obviously, um, respect for the holy things of God and the tabernacle and God's dwelling with the people. And this is the risk, is that if you're going to hang out with God and, and God's going to be around you, then it's going to get pretty hardcore, you know, and things are going to get pretty, pretty tough. And um, and so, uh, meaning it's going to be radical to be dwelling with a holy God. There's going to be consequences to that. You can't just do what you want to do. And, um, and that's what this guy does. And then it says, um, when Phineas, son of Eleazar, the grandson of Aaron, so one of the high priests, saw this, he jumped up, grabbed a spear, and rushed after the man into his tent, where he had taken the girl. He thrust the spear all the way through the man's body into her stomach, so the plague was stopped. But only after 24,000 people had already died. So there was some sort of plague, obviously, that affected the men um, of Israel, and uh, and for this plague to be stopped, we see Phineas, man, does something pretty hardcore, right? Grabs a spear, jumps up, and rushes after the man into his tent where he had taken the girl. The idea is that they've gone into his tent, um, and he puts the spear right through the man's body, and it, and and they're close. The man and the woman are close, and it goes through both of them. Holy cow! It's like a movie right there, man. They should make a movie of Numbers 25, right? <laughs> and maybe they already have, and I just don't know. It says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Phineas, son of Eleazar and grandson of Aaron the priest, has turned away my anger, for he was angry with uh, he was angry with my ang- with my kind of anger and would not tolerate the worship of any god but me. 
good little reminder right today is help me not tolerate the worship of any other God but the living God. And that's something to think about today, right? Do I tolerate in my own life um, another kind of worship? And that's something I need to think about, something I need to look at throughout the day. So I have stopped destroying all Israel as I had intended. And it says, now because of what he has done, because of his zeal for his God, and because he has made atonement for the people of Israel by what he did, I promised that he and his descendants shall be priests forever. Wow, a promise to Eliezer saying, hey, you're going to have a priesthood going on all the time. You know, really interesting how that's going to get fulfilled for sure in the future. Um, but isn't it interesting that atonement is, was made as sin was dealt with, you know? And Jesus, again, is the ultimate fulfillment. He dealt with our sin, right? He dealt with our sin problem. And that, you know, atonement was made. But not just atonement, not just the covering of our sin. The atonement speaks of covering for our sin. But literally wiping it away as far as the east is from the west. So the Lord has removed our sins from us. Right? Jesus has totally taken away our sin. And so in that way, Jesus is the fulfillment of wiping out our sin, taking it away, right? Uh, removing it and stopping the plague on us, right? Uh, you know, opening up our eyes to his wonderful love for us and what he's done for us on that cross. And Jesus forever is what? Our high priest, right? The one who has eradicated our sin, he becomes our high priest forever and ever, right? The book of Hebrews says. So the name of the man who was killed with the Midianite girl was Zimri, son of Zalu, a leader of the tribe of Simeon. So that comes from Simeon, the old Simeon tribe. Remember the Simeon tribe? Yeah, they're one of the tribes of the 12 sons of Jacob. And Simeon was one of the elder sons. And, uh, and here, part of his tribe... Oh, one of the guys goes way, way, way out of hand, right? And, you know, when you're worshiping Baal and you're hanging out with the girl, sometimes it clouds your what? Judgment a little bit. <laughs> and sometimes when we're wrapped up in our own idolatry, right, doesn't it cloud our judgment? Uh, so much so, you know, so much so. And that's what kind of joining ourselves to other things do is it clouds, you know, a clouds the way we look at Christ, the way we look at the Father. Um, and the more we join ourselves to different idols, the more we become clouded with uh, the true and living God. Um, and uh, that's so true. Our judgments become clouded in many ways. And this is what happened with Z Zimri. We're going to look at a little character um, kind of evaluation of this man. We see that, hey, he bought right in, he went with the crowd, and he became cloudy, and his judgments became off. Um, and this is what happens when we're blind to Christ, and we're not focused on Christ. We can really not see things very clearly at all. Uh, we might see things somewhat rationally, but even the rationality of human beings isn't very good, <laughs> you know? We tend to be even off being, quote, rational. And so the only way we can get focused back in the right way, the Bible says, is really through coming to Christ. That it's, it's through him that we see the world properly in, in the right paradigm, in the right way. And so that's the first thing we need to do is have our worship being directed in the right way right? Having our adoration in the right spots, the things we like, and, you know, having God be the first thing that we like, you know, uh, knowing Christ, those kind of things. And then the rest will fall into line, you know. But Zimri had it all mixed up, right? He got a little muddled for sure, and there was a consequence. So the girl's name was Cosby, daughter of Zur, a Midianite prince. Wow, and uh, so remember, Ishmael did have 12 tribes that came out of him. And there was a priest, uh, or prince, and so she was a daughter of a prince. So she, maybe he thought, oh man, she's popular. And, and you know, we're, we're not going to, nothing's going to happen to us. I mean, this, 
you know, she's the daughter of a prince. And maybe he got carried away with uh, pop culture, so to speak, and thought that that was going to, you know, popularity was going to help him out in the judgment with God. But it shows something pretty important, right? With God, there's no favoritism. Um, there's just no favoritism with the Lord. Um, you can be popular. You can not be popular, but you can be popular and you can be famous and all that. And you might get props and perks here on the planet, but, you know, when it comes to the Lord, you know, um, the Lord sees not as, not as humans see. Uh, God looks to the intent of the heart and, um, and he judges accordingly, you know, according to his righteousness. And so we all, uh, the Bible says, are condemned uh, by a righteous God. So Tina says she wants to be popular with God. Yeah, totally. And you are. You're, uh, when those who believe in Christ, it says you become children of God. That's pretty popular <laughs> to be a child of God. Uh, so then it says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Destroy the Midianites, for they are destroying you with their wiles. They are causing you to worship Baal. They are leading you astray, as you just have seen by the death of Cosby. So that is the um, Cosby show right there. I, I hate to put that pun on it, but that's kind of it, right? It's like um, they see what happened with Cosby and Zimri, and God says, hey, you're going to have to deal with the Midianites because this is why. If you don't, they're going to deal with you. And this is so true, man. The best way to deal with an idol is to destroy it, is to take it down. And and in a spiritual way, that's what we're constantly doing in the New Testament. It talks about that in a spiritual way, not in a physical way, but in a spiritual way, right? We demolish strongholds. Do you ever read that passage in the book of Corinthians? It says we take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ, right? We demolish strongholds. We're dealing with the things that are in the mind. So, man, really cool. God, help me to deal with the things in the mind today. Help the idolatry that creeps into my mind. Um, help me not be joined to the idols. Uh, let me re recognize that Jesus is the one who took, uh, you know, all of the wrath of the Father on my behalf, um, he's the one who was hung up on a tree there before the sun, right? With the sun on him. And, and what did it do? It removed, it turned away God's wrath from me. Whoa. Some really cool pictures in 25 for sure. So Laura says, I would rather store up treasures in heaven because man can never take the place of God. When we do things to, to give love to God by serving others. So true, right? Um, Tina says, hold our thoughts captive. Satan cannot read our minds. So true. So take those thoughts captive. Destroy, demolish. That's the New Testament idea here. Just as in the Old Testament, you see that they're going to take this land. They're going to go into the promised land. But they have enemies now. People won't let them pass. People won't let them get through. Remember, they've tried to do that peacefully, but they won't let them. They say, no, we're going to fight you. And so Israel's going to have to go to war. And they see that there's di these different people or these different uh, tribes of the enemy are trying to entice Israel away from serving their God, right? They can't get them through uh, kind of a curse, as in the latter or the last chapters with Balaam. They can't get them with a curse, so they get them with enticement. Woo, that's a word for us. So. You guys have a great weekend. Take care. It's so good always being in the house with you guys. That's for sure. So bless you. Bye-bye.